Hi, my name is Alex Tate. I'm the project manager for Shinra Technologies, and this is our R&D demo for the Shinra one-to-one -one architecture. What you're looking at here are 64 viewports into a single game world. And that's what the Shinra one to n architecture is all about. One game world shared between many, many users. And this allows us to have very complex calculations, very complex simulations, which we then share between many, many users. So we're going to go full screen now into the game and show you our world. So first up, there's just the scale of it. The map's huge. It's 20 miles by 20 miles, it's about a thousand square kilometers, and everything's loaded. Everything's up in RAM because we're running on huge supercomputers. And that means we can have massive landscapes, we can render all the way to the horizon, and everything's loaded. So this means it's very, very easy for the user. They can dive into the game whenever they like. They can just have to set up a video stream and stream it from the data center. There's no loading. There's no loading in the game either. So I'm sure you've played games where you go to a complex interior environment and you have to open the door and you get a loading bar. But for us, we don't have to do that. Everything's loaded, so you get a really nice, seamless, immersive experience where you're not pulled out by loading bars. We've also upped the uh, density, so we've got a million trees in the map. We've got several thousand rendered as models and the rest as billboards, but we get this really nice forested effect all the way to the horizon. We've also upped the density of characters. So if we go down here, you can see we've got 16,000 fully animated characters. Each one is running its own AI, it's got its own brain, it's making its own decisions. These are not particles, these are not pre-computed flight paths, this is real AI. In typical games, the number of AI agents, you're limited to a few dozen, a few hundred maybe, but because we're running on a supercomputer, in a data center, we can have huge AI simulations. And because all the users are together in the same world, everybody shares the same AI simulations. So these guys are all controlled by AI, but we can actually uh, work with them too and interact with them. We grab a little gang of Sams. Where's my guys? Here's my guys. You can see these will follow us around and start to do stuff in the map. So one of the key features of the demo is terrain deformation. So we can start to pull up mountains. There we go. So typically in multiplayer online games, terrain deformation is really difficult because you have to synchronize complex simulations between different clients but for us there's one world there's only one height map we edit it it changes for everybody it's really simple and no matter where you are in the map you see a few of the viewports they're quite close we've got a really far away view there wherever you are the same things are happening it's one shared world between all the users we've also got rocks forming on the top it's not something we've pushed particularly hard but we just wanted to show we can do it these are real physics objects, all shared between all the users. Again, typically you don't see physics very often in uh, online multiplayer games because it's really hard to synchronize. But for us, there is no synchronization. It's one world shared, shared between everybody. So this opens up the possibility of physics becoming actually a part of gameplay because you can rely on it being the same for every user in the game. So you can see we've got a nice little mountain range here. We're going to move over to a mountain over here. One of the other key features of the demo is fluid simulation and these guys can also produce fluids. So will these guys shoot up to the top of the mountain here and they can start to create fluids on the top of the mountain. So you can see these guys start to produce water. And this is a real interactive, real-time fluid simulation. You can see it's starting to flow down the mountain, it's finding the gullies, it's finding the canyons in the river, and naturally forming rivers in the canyons of the mountain. Got a nice bow wave, 
at the front as it follows the contours down the mountain. You can see we've got some nice waterfalls falling on the distance view there. And the water naturally falls down the mountain to find the low-lying areas and creates nice kind of mangrove swamps. And it's interactive as well. You can see these guys trying to ride the waves down the bottom. This is not just rendering. It's a real fluid simulation you can interact with. So we're going to show you a bit more of the fluid simulation. We're going to shoot up to the, the big lake at the top of the map here. And if you think we're moving fast, it's because we are. These guys actually fly at 900 miles an hour when we sprint. So for the purposes of a short demo, this is the best way to get around a huge map. But in fact, this is only possible because we've got everything loaded in memory. On a console or a PC, you couldn't move this fast because you couldn't stream the data in fast enough off the disk. But for us, everything's in RAM. We can move as fast as we like. We can teleport around the map. It's no problem. So you can see we've got a nice body of water here. We've got waves forming on the top of the lake, naturally, just like real waves would. And you can see these guys motorboating around on the surface, creating wakes, creating ripples, which ripple out across the surface of the lake, really realistically. So again, this is a real-time interactive fluid simulation, which is only possible because we've got Titan Black doing fluid simulation. We've got crazy hardware, and then we're sharing all the calculations between many, many users in the same world. So we've got terrain deformation, we've got a terrain simulation, and we've got a fluid simulation. So what happens when you put them together? Well, what happens when you start to change the floor underneath water? You get massive changes on the beds of lakes and seas, you get tidal waves. And that's what we get. So these waves are not scripted, these are not designed, these are real tidal waves forming in the real way tidal waves form, with massive changes of the land underneath the surface of the water. So we can start to really use this in games. These types of effects have only really been possible in Hollywood movies up until now. But now with supercomputers in the data center and the Shinra one-to-one architecture, we can make these real-time interactive experiences that users can enjoy in games. And this demo was created in two phases with really small teams. The engine was built by two programmers, one artist in six months. And then we added in the fluid simulation, terrain deformation, with a team of five programmers in another six months. So again, you know, this is small teams working in a very short amount of time. This isn't hundreds of years of dev effort, but with really great hardware, good architecture and a good platform, you can create amazing experiences in a really short period of time. So this is what we've come up with. We're tech guys. What we really need is for developers to take this kind of technology and imagine their own worlds, create their own experiences to really take this to the next level. And that's what we're looking for. We need developers to come on board and start to make amazing games, amazing new experiences that you can only get with this architecture.